point is that what uh, what's the number? Eight. Okay. Okay. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to the January 23rd, 2018 meeting of the Hendersonville Board of Mayor and Alderman. If you could please rise. We're going to start our meeting as, as we typically do. And that's with a prayer and uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, providing our prayer, our prayer is Pastor Michael Davis. He is the pastor at Hendersonville First Presbyterian Church. Very much appreciate you all being, you being here. My pleasure. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, uh, we pause at the beginning of this important meeting to offer praise and thanksgiving to you. We praise you for the beauty and wonder of your creation. We thank you for your grace and love and for your guidance and strength through the ups and downs of life. Thank you, Lord, for our mayor, the aldermen, and all the city officials who serve the city of Hendersonville. We thank you for their hard work and dedication to make this city a better, safer place, and we pray that you will bless them with safety and protection. Please bless their lives and their families and keep them all in your care. And Lord, we pray that you bless this board as they meet this evening to hear reports, share ideas, and make decisions. I pray they sense a balance of their responsibility and a joy that you, Lord, have them in these positions of leadership. Inspire their work and help them to solve important issues to make the city of Hendersonville a much better place to live. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Davis, thank you. And again, that's Pastor Davis from First Presbyterian in Hendersonville. We appreciate you being here. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, our acceptance of agenda is going to be a little bit more convoluted than most nights. Um, first, uh, Chairman Cunningham from Finance, we have a, uh, a we have a motion to approve the agenda from Alderman Sprouse. Do we need a second to approve the agenda? Second. We have a second. Uh, Chairman Cunningham, would you like to ask us to add two things to the agenda, one from Finance, one from Ward 3? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to add um, on the agenda Ordinance 2018-7 as item, gosh, I. Okay. Yeah. Okay, which is, a which is an ordinance amending Ordinance 2017-29 appropriating funds for uh, the feasibility study regarding impact fees for the de development in Hendersonville. And I'd like to add um, on to the uh, nominations on other agenda items for a nominee for, uh, to vote on the appointment of Charles Alexander in Ward 3 for the Beer Board as item under other agenda items, other agenda items okay. as B. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Um, we have a motion. Um, that's a motion to add two items to the agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Alderman Hedberg, second. Anybody wish to discuss the, adding these two items to the agenda? You just raise your hand because I've got several people in line. If you could just raise your hand, let me know if you want to discuss these two agendas. Alderman, Alderman Sprouse. Just the same, the typical question I ask, is there any particular um, reason to fast track the first item? Are we going to be missing any deadlines, or is there anything that we're going to lose out on if we don't fast track it? Alderman well, Cunningham. Um, thank you, Alderman. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, well, we have the uh, three bids in for the uh, feasibility study, and uh, all three bids came in a little bit higher than what we had originally budgeted. So... The fast, I think the faster, yeah, we've discussed this uh, several times, I think, in your committee as well. Um, so I think that it's time for us to take some action. And if we delay it, it'll be another month and a half before we. So there really won't, we won't lose out on anything if we wait? Um, no, just a couple of, you know, we'll. Okay. A half a month we'll. Okay. 
pretty much. Any other discussion on this a motion? A second to amend the. Okay, uh, Alderman Gilly. Hold on, I've got to turn off about four people first. There we go. Okay. Um, just clarification on the second thing, Miss Cunningham. Was that for consideration or for vote uh, on for, the beer board? For a vote, uh, we had a um, a resignation this week from Ward Three on the beer board. Oh. And uh, as a result, uh, their next meeting will not have a quorum. Um, Unless we take some action. And we can discuss that more when we get to it. So we'll be, we'll be voting to appoint two separate people, not two people for the same position. Right. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I just want to be clear on that. Thank you. Anybody else on this amendment? Okay. We have an amendment to add those two items to the agenda. Uh, uh, if you're in favor of that, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. Uh, Alderman Sprouse, anyone else opposed to that? <clears throat> that passes 12 to 1. Uh, Alderman Campbell. Yes, I'd like to uh, pull agenda item A, a and I have it uh, for the uh, February, our first meeting in February, please. Alderman Campbell, you are the sponsor of that, so that does not require a vote. You can just request that. So okay. that's done. Um, uh, Alderman Brown. Uh, <coughs> item, A. item Item A, um, Ordinance 2017-42. I would like... I don't know. Alderman Brown. I guess it would be J now. I would like to add uh, an ordinance 2018-8, an ordinance amending the Henderson Bill Municipal Code Title 10 Animal Control for this evening. We have a motion. <coughs> I need a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, anybody wish to discuss this addition to the agenda specifically? All those in favor of this addition that has been properly moved and seconded, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, please say no. That passed unanimously. Um, one of the things I would like to add is under mayor's mm -hmm. report, I would like to add aye under committee reports for, um, uh, let's make that announcements about ward meetings. I know that, sev that several of you all have some ward meetings coming up. And let's just add that under aye. <coughs> I, I, I make that motion and a second. Any discussion on that specifically, please just raise your hand. All in favor of adding that under committee report, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passed unanimously. Now we're on the main motion of the agenda. Uh, Alderman Stamper. Uh, I have a meeting for the Item A on, under other agenda items on the uh, beer board appointment. Is that is that for a ward specific seat or an at large seat? Um, I'll go ahead and explain it now. Um, I had a mistake two weeks ago. The one that we have for consideration uh, had a had a ward number on it. It should have been an at large seat. If we get to that point and y'all want to delay it for two weeks, I certainly understand because you were considering somebody for a ward appointment. Um, compared to somebody for an at-large seat. I totally get that. Um, we are in the situation that we've got a beer board meeting on February 1st, and uh, we failed to have a quorum last this month, and we had one person leave since then. So, uh, Alderman Stamper? Yeah, but thank you for that clarification, okay. Mayor. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, Alderman Hedberg, hold on one second. Alderman Hedberg. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to make um, an amendment to the agenda for the board nominations, if we can Item A through J, I, I'm sorry, A through I, if we can bundle those as one vote. Okay. Yeah. That, we're not going to vote on those tonight. Those are for next week, but certainly I'll look to you at the next meeting. Certainly I'll look to you next meeting and we can bundle those. Oh, so. never mind. Okay. I'm not reading that. Any more discussion on the agenda as we have amended it so far? All those in favor of the agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next on our list, we have a couple presentations. Um, you guys. Hold on here. Here we go. I'll tell you guys, it's a lot easier if you just come up here and line up there and face the camera. You get a couple more, more minutes of exposure. And as y'all do that, I'll tell everybody about y'all. This is, the, this is the 14 under Hendersonville Titans. It's the 2018 NFL Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl National Flag Football Tournament participants. Uh, the 14 under Hendersonville Titans football team have been selected to compete in the 2018 NFL Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl <coughs> National Flag Football Tournament. 
This team has the op these teams have the opportunities to test their skills against the best 32 teams in the nation. Uh, this group of young, young men not only display talent on the field, but character, respect, and maturity off the field. The 2018 Hendersonville Titans are honored to represent Hendersonville Civitan and the Tennessee Titans and are committed to bringing home this national award to the city of Hendersonville and certainly hope for a big trophy uh, at some time soon. So, so yeah. Um, uh, coaches, why don't you all come on up here, too? Okay. Uh, Keon Stafford. Okay, Josh Ferguson. Tyson Jefferson. I hope that photo shot was really taking pictures. I appreciate the fact that you spoke to me. Y'all haven't laughed at me yet. So. Uh, Ryan Oden. Skyler Rowan. Jack Ducey. AJ Bonner. Kylan Jones. Cameron Ghost. Jackie Holt. Coach Penn. Steve Penn. Okay. Coach Bonner. Coach Tony Klein. Now what I ask you all to do is listen for a few minutes. Coach Klein, are you going to do it? He's going to tell you a little bit about these guys. Go ahead. All right, I'll be brief. Uh, I was contacted by the uh, Tennessee Titans to uh, get a team of select young men to represent the Titans. Uh, they chose us because of uh, the reputation we have, the league that we've built uh, with coaches and the players. Uh, the Titans felt that Hendersonville Civitan was the best representation out of the state. So I felt that was a great honor. Uh, when I was asked uh, if I could put a team together, I thought of one person that would coach that team. And uh, it was Cameron Goss uh, that I could send that far away with boys and represent the city in the best manner. Uh, I've turned the team over to him. He's selected it through uh, tryouts with about 80 kids. And just briefly, I'm going to have him come talk about the kids real quick and what they've done. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I think it goes without being said that... Uh, when we evaluated each of these athletes, we were looking for more than just talent. We know that we're going to go uh, up against the top 32 teams in the nation. We, we met with each of these athletes. We spoke with their teachers. We spoke with their, uh, their guidance counselors, athletic directors. A lot of these kids have uh, expressed and shown above and beyond attitude and a level of commitment to the city that either they live in or, or, or Hendersonville. Um, they're just really, really, really good kids, and uh, we're honored to have them, <clears throat> and we look forward to going down there and, and winning. I want to tell you all about somebody else. He's the 2017 Tennessee All Mid-State Golf Team Coach of the Year. His name is Andy Gilley. He's an alderman for the city of Hendersonville. Uh, congratulations to him. Congratulations to Hendersonville High School golf coach and the team. Uh, he led the Commandos to a nearly perfect season. Uh, the, the golf team finished runner-up in division large class with 595 team score. And was, his team was undefeated for the entire season and placed second in the state tournament. Congratulations, Coach Gilley. Thank you. Good team. Good players. Good players. <laughs> Amen, brother. Um, next, we have a presentation from Craft CPAs. This is about our comprehensive annual financial report. Did I get that correct? Yes, you did. Okay, thank you so much. Tell is us this, your name and go ahead. Is this, uh, is that this one's keyboard on? on? Uh, is it keyboard? Well, I messed the keyboard up. Probably not. Okay. Probably not. I'm Beverly Horner with Craft CPAs and uh, with me tonight is Julie Evans, who is the senior manager for your your audit. And oh, uh, on, do we need the projector? 
No. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll be brief. I know you have a long agenda. And so you should have received two documents from us. One is your comprehensive annual financial report, and the other is a report to the uh, governing body of the of the uh, the mayor and board of aldermen. So we have reviewed the report to the mayor and board of aldermen in detail with the finance committee earlier. So we won't go into any detail about that unless you have questions. Uh, I'll point out just a couple of things to you in the comprehensive annual financial report. If you um, flip past the introductory section to page one, it's about seven or eight pages in, it's the independent auditor's report. And that, that report says that we have reviewed your financial information and uh, tested, tested controls and tested financial transactions, and we have determined that your financial statements are presented fairly. It's an unmodified opinion. It's the best opinion that we can give. So that and the very end of this big book are the only things that are really ours. The rest are yours. So at the end, on page 100, excuse me, um, on page 98 is our report on internal control under governmental auditing standards. And then on page 100 is our internal control report for each major program. Um, and then at, just following that, on page 102, is the schedule of findings and question cost that summarizes the results of the audit. And you'll notice as you read through that that it's um, an unmodified opinion. There were no material weakness reported, no significant deficiencies reported, uh, no noncompliance reported, and um, no internal control weaknesses over federal programs. So it's, that's just an, an excellent result. So we, we congratulate you on that. Um, I'll be glad to talk about the numbers if you'd like, but most people don't really want to hear me talk about the numbers. So <laughs> I'll, um, I'll just ask you to, um, to give me guidance as to what you'd like me to cover. Tell me what you think about our finance team. Your finance team did a great job. Thank you. Um, they make our job much easier because they help us to accomplish what we need to accomplish in a um, in an easy time frame. Thank you. Any questions, uh, Alderman Stamper? Thank you, uh, Ms. Horner. I asked you about this in in finance committee, but for the benefit of the full board, we talked about our our general fund balance that's kind of un that's free and clear, unencumbered, if you mm -hmm. will. Uh, how how many you know? how long you th that cash would last um, and kind of where that needs to be. Do you mind kind of re uh, revisiting I'm that? Sure, I'll be glad to. Uh, if you look on page 17, down in the bottom section under fund balance, you'll see an unassigned fund balance of about $3.2 million. And your total expenditures for the year are $32 million. So that, that fund balance that you have on hand wouldn't go for too long. Your total fund balance is $10 million, so that would cover your that would cover about four months' worth of expenditures. So that may be tighter than you'd like it to be. Um, that's a um, you know that's a strategic decision that you as a board need to make, but that's um, that's pretty tight. Thank you. No. <coughs> Thank you. We appreciate your time. Appreciate what you did for us. Thank you. Thank we you. appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Chief Bush. We next have a presentation about our ISO rating. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Chip. This is going to be a brief presentation. Once uh, Chip helps me here with a little bit with the audio stuff or visual stuff, uh, it's 11 slides, so it won't take Hold up too much time. Hold on one second. Kevin, can you hit a light switch back there for us? Thank you. Uh, so I know you guys got a pretty lengthy agenda and you want to move on with uh, business. No, but I think this is uh, great news, but it's also uh, a credit to what the council has committed to the fire department and the commitment from within the fire department as well uh, of what we've attained over the last uh, five or six years. Of course, me being chief for the last three, uh, I've played a decent role in that. But again, I'm going to give all the kudos to the support that you give us and the support that the staff and the commitment that they have. Uh, so as we get into this, uh, I'll talk a little more about it. 
I don't know what's what here. I'll click that off. i click that off. That's not mine. Is that a no? I did, but it'll click me again. Let's see. Sorry about that. It didn't do that to us earlier today. Let's hit next. Cancel. Well, then let's just do yes. Do what I usually do at this point. I just turn it off. I could probably do some of it by memory, but I don't know that I would cover everything that uh, that you all uh, would uh, like to have or need. We'll, we'll get there. He's very good at fighting fires. <laughs> uh, so in saying this, we'll, we'll kind of move through this quickly. Uh, obviously, if there's any questions, you guys can stop me uh, if the mayor allows that now or you know how to get a hold of me. <laughs> Uh, and this is also for public uh, knowledge. This is where it's most important. Uh, I want the public to know come April what they need to be doing and how they need to go about uh, possibly uh, seeing the decrease in their insurance ratings. So in saying that, moving forward, what determines our score? Uh, there's, very, uh, there's various things in the uh, involvement with your ISO rating. Uh, basically your fire flows, so like in your business districts, uh, if there's enough water supply around the areas to put out a large fire, uh, then you get into your emergency communications. Obviously, going to the ECC consolidated system has helped some with that, um, and it's going to get better as years go on. There were some things as we went through with this that they had some deficiencies in that we pointed out with them. We discussed, and probably over the next couple of years, as other fire departments around the area go through this, uh, along with PD units, uh, they'll be able to show some other areas that they can improve their communications. Obviously, our fire department uh, role we play is our equipment, uh, the uh, staffing, uh, our stations, uh, our training. Uh, there are several things that go into that. Again, that goes back to the support that you guys give us. Uh, the staffing levels, we always know, uh, you guys know always we're going to ask for more people. We could always use more people. Uh, and an ISO rating is based off people that respond and are actually on the fire ground within a certain amount of minutes. And then, of course, the water supply is important as well. Uh, but we have a limited role with that because we really don't have any control over uh, HUD or uh, White House water. So <clears throat> basically, uh, right now we rate as a 4, 4X. So what does that mean? Uh, basically the 4X is, uh, the 4 is your solid in water, your solid in fire stations, response times, uh, and communications. The 4X is your good in two of those areas. And the area that makes that an X is the water supply. So there's areas in town that could be considered an X, uh, and that insurance rating may not be as well as the ones that are in the, uh, the required areas for water. Uh, older parts of town could be affected by that. It's up to the public, up to each, each individual homeowner and actual business owner to reach out to your insurance company and find out what kind of a benefit you're gonna get, a reduction. Uh, so as of April the 1st, we're gonna go from a 4, 4X four to a 3, 3X. Three the X is still the same thing. There's some areas where we have some concerns with water, uh, but realize, again, that we don't have any control over the water. We can ask for things. We can try to have a working uh, relationship with those folks uh, as stoke stakeholders in our city, uh, but ultimately they are their own entities. Uh, we can ask for it, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're always going to comply. They're great to work with, uh, and they help us out quite a bit. Uh, so again, it's going to be savings to the homeowners and commercial business owners. Obviously, the commercial business owners are going to reap the bigger benefit uh, because they have bigger buildings on bigger areas of land. Uh, but the homeowners are also going to see uh, some kind of a reduction as well. Again, communities are according to a uniform set of criteria. So this is stuff that's based across the state, country. Uh, the same criteria is met by every fire department that goes through an ISO rating. Uh, so how is our score determined? Again, 10% of that is the ECC. Uh, they play a small part in it but it is a, an integral part. Uh, we play 50% of that role by training, staffing, stations, apparatus. Uh, again, the, the, the commitment that you guys have made, the commitment my staff has made, has made a, a big change in that to help push us to a lower rating. And again, the water supply is 40% of that score. So uh, what does that mean to us across the country and across the state? Out of 875 ISO uh, departments in the state, uh, we are one of 55. We're in the top 6.2% in the state uh, in the rating system. 
Uh, across the country, you have 46,402 departments uh, countrywide, and what does that mean for us? Our department is one of 34, 3,409. There's a class three or three X or lower, and that's the top 7%. Uh, so again, I'd like to give you guys kudos and my staff kudos. That's pretty significant numbers for us to be in the top upper 10% across the country. Uh, so the savings for homeowners and businesses, again, can be anywhere from 2 to 9%. It's up to your each individual insurance uh, company. Uh, again, April the 1st is when you're supposed to start contacting them, and they will regulate whether it's two, up to 9%. Uh, and basically, we try to do it just as a guesstimate. It's not really a guesstimate. It's, a, it's actually a theory that we have that we use through MTAS, uh, the value of one and two family dwellings. Uh, the next slides will show you that. Uh, a median home here is $250,000. Uh, you figure that could be anywhere from $1,750 at 2% to $78,75 at 9%. Uh, savings to the community as a whole, uh, again, will be much higher. So when you figure it could be anywhere from that 2 to 9%, your median homes, uh, the total amount of those homes is $15,836,000. At 2%, you're looking at an annual savings to the homeowners alone, just the homeowners, this is not businesses, of $316,720. Uh, over five years, uh, that's a pretty significant savings for the homeowners in this community at $1.5 million, almost 1.6. Uh, again, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty significant savings for homeowners. Uh, if you're on the upper side of that at the 9%, again, your basis of all the uh, median homes is $15,836,000. At 9%, an annual savings of $1.4 million, and over that five years, it's going to equal up to about $7.1 million of savings to the homeowners here in town. Now, this ISO rating attributes a lot of things, but it also attracts a lot of businesses here, which is always good. The more people that come to Hendersonville to live, play, work, and do different things, it can help draw and attract those with the lower ISO ratings. Um, I think that's pretty significant uh, for just homeowners alone at the amount of money that we can save you as the homeowners here in the city. Um, your public uh, uh, private uh, class protection uh, again lowers your premiums always going to be possible uh, so what do we shoot for now what, what's next for the Hendersonville Fire Department uh, it gives you a valuable benchmark it gives you something else to look at so where can we improve? If you guys have been to the website and you've seen that we had MTAS come in and do a station study for us, you know where they've laid out uh, where our next station should be. Uh, this actually gives some more uh, power behind that. Uh, it's valuable when you're trying to plan, budget, and justify fire protection for the homeowners and businesses in this area. Uh, and of course, my goal over the next couple of years, uh, the good thing about ISO is once we feel like we get to a certain point, we can always call them back in. This is the first one we've had since 2011, so about six years. And uh, I'm going to try it over the next couple of years to get us to a two. Uh, I know that's a lofty goal, but I feel like with the staff that we have and some of the things that we're going to start implementing here in the next couple of months uh, with Bricer and some other things that we've talked about on the council, uh, we're going to be online for that. And if we could get this thing lowered to a two uh, within the next couple of years, again, that could be significant savings to homeowners and businesses here in the city of Hendersonville. That's kind of it in a nutshell. That's my information. Uh, again, obviously, it takes a commitment from everybody in this room and my staff, and uh, I'm, I'm honored to be who I am and, and to lead the fire department the way it's being led. Chief Bush, you hit on this pretty well, but I'm going to ask you to repeat if you could. Um, how can homeowners take advantage of this? April the 1st, 2018, you need to start contacting your own homeowners insurance people, whoever it is, State Farm, Allstate, Nationwide, whoever it is, uh, call them and tell them we've had a reduction in our ISO rating. Uh, some of them may try to tell you that it doesn't matter, but it does. Uh, so push them on that, talk with them about it, because it does make a difference. And it's up to them whether it's the 2% up to 9%. You could fall anywhere into that. But it's very important that you reach out April the 1st to your insurance company and start that process. And that's for the business owners as well. Chief Bush, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I just had one question with the need for two more houses if we had a new house go up in the next year or two how quickly would it drop the ISO to two well, of course the water supply is the, the the biggest concern that's where the X comes into play like I was talking about uh, obviously our apparatus carry water 
So that would gain you some ground, some momentum. Uh, there's some other avenues. Uh, we got the grant vehicle here a few years ago, the special operations vehicle. If we had staffing for that, we could count that as a service truck. Uh, we're only six points away from getting a two. And with our training, the training that we're pushing down on our folks, the training that they're wanting, the training we're giving them, uh, along with maybe staffing that apparatus and maybe a station in the next year or two, uh, I, I think it's a feasible goal to, for us to reach a two. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I don't have any questions, Chief Bush. Um, you just said that you're, you're honored to be um, our chief. I think we are more honored to have you as our chief than you are to, to be the chief. We, we appreciate everything you do, the hard work you put in. You're understaffed, and you still get there no matter what. No complaints. You're always there 24-7 for the safety of the city. And I personally, and I know everybody, I would just want to say thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, but you say April the 1st of 18. It's to our advantage if, if my homeowner's uh, premium is due July, I need to get in April the 1st because it, it may take effect on my premiums that comes July the 1st. That, that's correct. By the same token, if my premium <clears throat> is due December, I won't see it until it is, comes up for renewal, right? That's correct, sir. Okay. But they'll, they'll have that notation ready for that reduction, whatever that may be. So but, <clears> whatever you paid last December, uh, with that reduction included, it'll be less this December. But it, we'll only recognize it when it, our premium comes due. That is correct. Thank but you. you do need to get on the phone and, make, and get that process started because it could take them a while. I'm not, I'm not familiar with how long it takes them to, to make their assessment <clears> and, and tell you how much of a percentage uh, that you'll reduce that by. Appreciate that. Chief Bush, thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank on you. This. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is approval of minutes from January 9th, 2018. So moved. A motion and a second. All those in favor of approving our minutes from January 9th, 2018, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passed. Uh, we have one abstention. Alderman Woodcock. That passes unanimously. Next, we have citizen comments. We have nobody signed up for citizen comments, followed by committee reports. Chairman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. We had a chock full agenda tonight. Um, just to review, uh, we passed, uh, we uh, discussed 2018-4 uh, amending budget ordinance 2017-23 by appropriating an additional $97,681.65 for the purchase of parks equipment, particularly two lawnmowers. Uh, that was, uh, we didn't have any recommendation for that. Uh, that will be passed on to BOMA in two weeks. Uh, ordinance 2018-5, increasing the minimum amount of purchasing with informal competitive bidding, that passed unanimously. Uh, that will be uh, from a minimum of uh, $1,000 up to $2,500. And that should streamline the process for our department heads. Uh, ordinance 2018-6, amending budge, budget, budget ordinance 2017-23 by appropriating, appropriating general funds in an amount to not to exceed 28,000 for a bluegrass down subdivision, that passed unanimously. 2018-7 uh, amending budget ordinance 2017-23 by appropriating funds for a feasibility study regarding impact fees for the development of Hendersonville. Uh, that was passed unanimously and that will come before the board tonight. That was added to the agenda because we had to increase it by uh, $15,000. The budget called for $40,000. We increased it to $55,000. Uh, resolutions, resolution 2018-4 to declare equipment owned by the city to be surplus property and directing disposal of, sus of same, that passed unanimously. Resolution 2018-5 to replace wrecked vehicles in the police department and that passed unanimously. Resolution 2018-6 to apply for assistance to firefighters grant AFG, that passed unanimously. Uh, we had a discussion with our auditors a uh, little Q&A, um, and, and that report was very, very good. And uh, Alderman Stamper discussed the um, uh, general fund balance in depth with them. Uh, update on peer pay period change and execute time. Uh, that was, uh, we were updated by Dana 
about uh, the execute time. I'm not going to go into the details, but uh, that's progressing, and um, we should come. Uh, there should be a minimal uh, uh, cost, additional cost on that, and um, free training. Uh, we reviewed budget overage report and the revenue report and sales tax analysis report, and um, our uh, total revenue is up uh, was 105.7 percent. County revenue 72.6 percent. Uh, state revenue at 89.9 percent, and total operating revenue we're at 103.2 percent. And our sales tax, we are. Uh, have collected um, $1,071,021, um, and that was, you know, uh, last month uh, for a total change of uh, 55998 uh, Cumulative change over budget of 513177 or 7.54% for a total of, uh, so we're up by 7.5% year over year. And... Then we had a discussion on the status of the bond, where we stood. Uh, so year to date, we spent about a uh, little over a million dollars, a million fourteen thousand dollars. We have four million seven hundred eighty-eight thousand two hundred thirty-three dollars left in that bond issue. Uh, we did uh, the bulk of that already spent was for two fire trucks, and we had budgeted eight hundred eighty thousand. We spent eight hundred seventy-three thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, because uh, Chief Bush was able to get those uh, in before the end of the year and got a discount on them. So thank you for that. Um, we spent a little on, the, we spent the um, 120000 on the inline rink, and that's being done now, and um, a few little odds and ends on the fire hall and uh, paving. Uh, and let me see. I think that's almost the end of my report. Yeah, that's the end of my report, but kudos to the fire department and to our police department. I mean, I'm a bank employee, and that guy was a serial robber. He, he, he picked the wrong city to rob the, on his sixth attempt to rob a bank, and kudos to our police department for nabbing him. Thank you. Chairman Cunningham, thank you. Uh, Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to ask Chairman Cunningham a, a question. Go that ahead. Two weeks ago about pay study. You said you'd have information on pay study. At yes, we did the pay study, yeah. Um, if you said it, I missed it. I'm sorry. Dana made the um, updated us on the pay study. So let me look at my notes here. Dana, is Dana here? Ron? Okay, let me look at my notes. Hold on. I do have my notes. Yeah, I have my notes. Sorry. Okay, here's the pay study update. Uh, we're not going to nearly spend, we had thought we were going to spend, uh, originally thought we were going to spend around $25,000 extra. We're not going to even come near that amount. Uh, they're doing the, uh, they have the pay periods down, like uh, the, the last one they have down is. Hold on, Chairman the, Cunningham, I think uh, I'm sorry. pay study versus pay plan. Pay study versus pay plan. Oh, pay study. study. Yeah. Pay study. Yeah. I'm talking about the pay plan. I want to talk about the pay study. I understand the pay plan, but. Do you have I'm answers not, or do you want to get back? Um, yeah, I don't have an answer. I, I misunderstood. I thought we were talking about the, the new payroll Would you system? like to call on Peter? Deferred Peter. <laughs> Peter? <laughs> Help. Help. I was. <laughs> Peter, I'm glad ahead. to hear that it's going to cost a lot less than twenty-five yes. thousand. And I mean, we're, gonna, we're almost. We're going to be. Uh, it's going to be fully implemented, uh, paper-free. It looks like by uh, the end of March, in about another month and a half, and um, they're updating the system now, and the test period is going to be in about two weeks from now. Thank you. Sorry, I misunderstood. That's you. fine. I, I love all that information too. I think everybody else along here did. Sorry. Information's uh, good. Alderman Brown, go ahead. Your question for I Peter. just uh, is the pay study been bid out? Are we moving? Yes, forward sir. Yet? The uh, RFP went out for the pay study uh, a couple of weeks ago now. 
Uh, I've received a few phone calls back. I know I've got one person so far that have indicated to me they will be submitting a uh, uh, cost. And uh, as soon as we get more information in, I'll be bringing it back to the board, I would imagine. Uh, and then we'll determine what we need to do. When's the RFP, RFP shut down? Uh, they're due back in to me by February the 1st. And if there's anybody out there that's listening to this, go to the website. Uh, it should be listed on the website under bids. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Sorry, uh, I misunderstood you. Before or after budget. Chairman Cunningham, anything else? Uh, no, that's the end of my report. <laughs> Thank you. Chairman Sprouse, uh, General Committee. Thank you, Mayor. If you'll look on tonight's agenda under ordinance and resolutions, items B, C, D, E, and F, as previously been reported, have all been recommended for approval by General Committee. I'd also like to announce a special <laughs> called meeting. General Committee will have a special called meeting this Friday. That's the 26th at 1 p.m. here at City Hall. Uh, we put a notice out yesterday that meeting was going to be at 3 o'clock, um, but due to some conflicts and family emergencies, uh, we're going to have to move that up to 1 o'clock. Again, it's going to be on January. January 26th at 1 o'clock, uh, give an opportunity for city staff and members of the General Committee to meet with a representative from Friends of the Indian Lake Peninsula and just discuss current and next steps with uh, with their ongoing effort. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Sprouse. Uh, Alderman Petrelli. I want to make sure I got in the right order. I just had a question about that meeting, Scott. Yeah, go ahead. Can, could you all give a report as soon as possible that can be shared? I will be happy in our next committee report to uh, give an update on that meeting. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Alderman Sprouse, anything else? No. No, thank you. Uh, Alderman, uh, Chairman Brown, public safety. Thank you, Mayor. We had a very short uh, special called meeting to discuss resolution 2018-6, which is a resolution uh, allowing uh, the fire department to go ahead and apply for about $550,000 worth of grants that could supply us uh, brush trucks, some radio equipment, air compressor, and some uh, washing machine for our turnout gear that we talked about and pulled some of it out of actually last year's budget. So uh, they can go ahead and write those grants. If they are approved, any any or all pieces will cost us 10%. So uh, that, that's a pretty good grant if we can get them. We can get $550,000 worth of stuff for about 50 grand. So we approve that to be done. That'll be before you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Brown. Chairman Skidmore, Public Works. Yes, thank you. I don't have an official report this evening. As you can tell, we went through all this tonight. Um, so I'm not going to bore our board with all our stuff until I get it concise and come back at our next meeting and tell you exactly what happens. But it was a lot, but it was great stuff, great stuff, exciting stuff. And I, and I do want to uh, thank the Public Works Department. We had some snow. If you all didn't know it, we had some snow this past week week and a half and uh, they really did a great job in salting the main roads. We could not obviously get to a lot of the, the secondary streets because they were so bad with ice and then on top of the snow. But I want to commend them because they really worked hard, the public works. Um, we used a, roughly about, um, because of the, the cold of the, of, of the weather, about two thirds of the salt. We still have some, we're probably out of an abundance of precaution uh, we're probably going to buy a load or two couple tons of, of salt just to make sure that we've got enough for this year. We'll probably be okay but for next year as well. So uh, just want to say a great job with that, and I'll give you a full report at our next meeting, Mayor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chairman Scoreboard. Chairman Campbell, Capital Projects. No report tonight, Mayor. Thank you. <coughs> you have a meeting coming up when? I uh, haven't scheduled it yet due to the death, uh, death of my family. I've oh. had to reschedule that. So. Apologize yes, for that. Yes, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, Chairman, uh, excuse me, Alderman Petrelli, Planning Commission. No report. Okay. Alderman Woodcock, Henderson Horizons. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I just wanted to uh, thank the board uh, for being open and receptive to the committee last meeting. I apologize for not being here. And I also want to thank the board members who called to check in on me while I was out. I appreciate that, too. Thank you. Appreciate that, uh, Alderman Woodcock. Uh, no mayor's report? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Skidmore. Thank you. I just want to say a quick thanks to Daryl or Alderman Woodcock of your efforts on the Horizon Committee. It was extremely <laughs> it was extremely informative, and uh, I appreciate all the effort because I know that you spearheaded us as a board uh, for that the group that worked, and I want to thank you for all your hard work, um, you. and uh, we couldn't have had anybody better for it. 
So I want to thank you for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Chairman Skidmore, thank you. Chairman thank you. Woodcock, thank you. Um, uh, no mayor's report. Uh, Chairman, excuse me, Alderman Skidmore, <laughs> Alderman Petrelli, any ward meetings coming up? Go ahead. Uh, if I may. Go ahead. Um, I was going to tell you after the meeting, but Alderman Petrelli and myself, we had our, uh, uh, as far as our crime uh, ward meeting, you know, to, to set up, you know, for the, uh, you know, to let the people know what our, the process of Hendersonville and what they can do to correct stuff. We had, we were one of the very first uh, wards to have a, uh, a uh, crime meeting uh, within the city. We had ours back in uh, November. Um, it was a success. We had it uh, at the uh, police department, and it was a, a really uh, excellent turnout. And uh, we we may have one. I'm gonna, she and I are in, right now in discussions to maybe start ha start having these periodically, like maybe twice a year, maybe one in the spring and one in the fall. Um, in fact, I see one of our constituents that was at that meeting. Uh, when you say it was a great. Uh, meeting was and so we were one of the first in Hendersonville I'm proud to say that but thank you for asking we at this point or oh, we're looking at the spring to having another one <coughs> thank you Alderman Sprouse Alderman Campbell um, I'm going to defer to Mr. Brown or Mr. Gilly well that's interesting uh, <laughs> we'll get there uh, Alderman Hedberg Alderman Cunningham thank you mayor uh, we have our uh, Next ward meeting scheduled for this Thursday at the Good Shepherd Church at 6.30 at the, their fellowship hall. We have some special guests that will be here that will be in attendance. Uh, our uh, chief of police, our fire chief, and hopefully our mayor, and our public works engineer. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Hedberg, do you want to add anything? Uh, no, thanks. Okay. Uh, Alderman Brown, uh, Alderman Gilly. I would, uh, I would defer to uh, my junior alderman here on my right. No sense both of us talking. He does it more eloquently. Alderman Gilly, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're going to have a combined. We've we've done this a couple times throughout the past year. We're going to have a combined Ward Four and Ward Two uh, community meeting on crime and and other issues. It will be February twelfth, Monday, February twelfth at 7 o'clock at the Hendersonville First United Methodist Church. I would encourage you all to uh, visit several of our Facebook pages and the police department website where we'll post exact information about who will be there and where to enter the building and things like that. But February 12th, 7 o'clock, Ward 4 and Ward 2 combined. Thank you. Alderman Frost, Alderman Woodcock. Should we move? No, okay, Alderman. Do y'all have any ward meetings coming up or anything you want to? Yeah, but we have one coming up that's going to be involving um, um, paving, blasting, and uh, stormwater okay. update, giving the public an update on that project. Appreciate that. Alderman Waters. There you go. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> ward 6 had our meeting this past <laughs> Friday. <clears throat> We had a pretty good turnout. I think we had, I think I counted 35. That's a good turnout on a Friday evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I want to encourage uh, board members and people that's watching this, please try to attend. It's so important. The uh, chief and uh, Officer Owens, they made a great presentation of our crime in our city. And I tell you, it's, it's shocking. But I, I encourage everybody to try to attend these meetings when they come before you. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. Next, we have ordinances and resolutions. Um, we need to go to item B. Uh, Alderman Stamper, do you have a motion? <coughs> uh, move to approve. This is second reading of Ordinance 2017-46, oh. an ordinance amending the Henderson Municipal Code, Title 17, of Refuse and Trash Disposal. We have a motion second. and a second. All those in favor of accepting second reading of Ordinance 2017-46, please signify by saying aye. Those opposed, please say no. Mm -hmm. That passed unanimously. Next, we have second reading of Ordinance 2018-2. This is an ordinance establishing standards for small wireless facilities and the public rights of way. I so move. In a second. I need to make two amendments, however. Um, if you could turn to page 55. I'm sorry. Uh, it's... I'm going to back it up a little bit. Um... 
Uh, sorry. <coughs> what do you think that is? Mm -hmm. Uh, 34. Okay. No. Where is it, 35? Okay, if you look, let's see, it's going to be page 39. Um, uh, paragraph 9, section B. What I'm attempting to do here is, um, right now, the way this is written, that only only occasionally will companies have to go to our planning commission to get permission to put up new utility poles. I would like for them to always go to the planning commission to put up new utility poles. Um, I think that it makes, in talking with Keith Free, um, we're not going to slow them down any. Uh, certainly they, they understand that we may have utility poles that are available for them right now and encourage them to use those. And the way to do that would be uh, uh, paragraph 9 under B. We're going to, let's see, where it says not be permitted. Um, and then we're going to strike to be installed in rights away in which no utility poles, street light poles, or wireless support structures exist at the time of application without prior approval by the Henderson Regional Planning Commission. So now B will read, new utility poles or wireless support structures shall not be permitted without prior approval by the Henderson Regional Planning Commission. Then what I also need to do in order to be consistent is to turn over on the next page and at the very bottom um, where you have, let's see, one here. Actually, I'm sorry, go back one page. <laughs> On page 38, the, let's see, D. So read, I want to start where D is there, and it's going to continue to the top of the next, of the next page. So you've got D, one able to match design and color of existing poles. Um, and then it continues to number five up there. What I'd like to do is scratch where no utility pole exists. Um, so if you just read number five uh, with my amendment, it would be the approval of the Hendersonville Regional Planning Commission shall be required for the installation of new utility poles. So uh, those are my, the two parts to my one amendment. And I so move. A motion and a second. Any discussion on this amendment? All those in favor of this amendment, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please signify by saying no. That passes unanimously. We are now back on to the main motion. All those in favor of second reading of Ordinance 2018-2, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. And that passes unanimously, which is the first time tonight I've said unanimously correct. Um, next, we have second reading of Ordinance 2018-3rd. This is a companion ordinance uh, to establish comprehensive fees for small cell facility permits for use of city-owned property and public rights away. I so move. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next, we have reading of a resolution 2018-2 this is a resolution to approve final development plan amendment for Indian Lake Village phase one to add storage to increase the building height standards Alderman Petrelli we have a motion and a second Alderman Petrelli um, can you help us with something we have a typo do you want to explain it or should you have Kay, Kay explain it for us okay uh, okay uh, okay and let's have Kay explain it and then we might need you to actually amend this thank you it's just in the caption. Um, what was in your book said to increase or to add storage to increase the building height standards, and it should just say remove to add storage. You have a corrected version in your packet. We need to amend that. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, we're going to pass it the way she just read it because that's what everybody's been doing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's been provided. So we're, we're okay with the way that it's presented and the way it's typed there. Uh, what you got earlier had that typo in there. Uh, but we're going to pass what's what's in front of us, or we're going to, I should say, we're going to vote on what's in front of us. Autumn Petrelli, anything? You want to add anything? No, sir. Just okay. th this is the project. If you have any questions of the architect, the architect is present, but, I mean, it's a slam dunk. It's it's the Indian Lake Tower that's it's going to go facing the highway. And just to kind of give some uh, uh, visual signage to identify 
that area of shopping in Hendersonville. That's it's it's in your packet. Thank you, Alderman Stamper. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that this particular, you know, change. It just seems odd to me that we'd have one structure in the whole city, kind of a lot larger, if you will, than anyone else is permitted to do. I know years ago we went from uh, the McDonald's and all the Crystal and Taco Bell. Whenever they redesigned, we forced them a lot lower, uh, which seemed to be more aesthetically pleasing and consistent with where we wanted to go. So having this, to me, you know, gigantic sign out there off the roadway, I, I just don't see the, I mean, I, I, I don't see the the value in doing this um, for the for this one particular uh, location, just kind of adding a billboard, if you will, from from the from the roadside. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I mean, I'm inclined not to not to support it. I'm, I'm open to listening to to why it's needed, but um, I don't. I personally don't think that we should deviate from our standards for something <laughs> like this. Thank you, Alderman Stanford. Thank you, Alderman Frost. Uh, basically, that's kind of how I feel sitting here looking at it. It looks like it's just sticking out there by itself, and it's it's a billboard. But I want to ask Alderman Petrelli, what was the Planning Commission's vote on this? Key, yeah, it was unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Alderman, uh, Alderman Sprouse. Thank you, Mayor. Well, gentlemen, I think that the, uh, the reason why we haven't had anything like this before, because nothing has been presented to us like this before. I think there's some very important words that if you look in the zoning, this this we're not this is not an amendment to our sign ordinance. Uh, now, if you if you look as you're approaching Hendersonville on uh, on Vietnam Veterans Boulevard, you will see billboards, and this is not a billboard. Um, billboards are considered appropriate signs if you're advertising something across a four lane divided state highway. The traffic is going 60. We hope 60 to 65 miles per hour, but we realistically know it's something a little different. So that's why they don't have the same standard as a McDonald's that's going along a surface street where traffic's going along at 35 to 40 miles per hour. Um, this is not someone's going to pull into the parking lot directly off the bypass. It's a little different. So we don't have billboards. I'm glad we don't have billboards. And this clearly is not a billboard. This is why it's having to be, it be uh, an amendment to a building height. Technically, this is going to be a structure as if it were an occupied building, except it's not an occupied building. Um, I think that it would do nothing more um, in a time when we're finding greater competition in markets to commu in communities north of Sumner, I was north of Hendersonville, that we give someone a reminder of a very significant and one of the first um, major commercial developments in our community. Um, they're not coming and asking for us to put up a billboard, um, but then at the same time, they are asking for us to give essentially what is a monument style version of a billboard. Just like decades ago, uh, or even more recently when we changed the sign ordinance where we started to go to the monument type signs and we're telling the McDonald's and the grocery stores and things to get away from a sign and go into something that's more architectural. This is doing the exact same thing, except it's doing it on a scale that is appropriate for a 400 acre development, addressing traffic that is coming across at 60 to 70 miles an hour um, along uh, a state highway. Something a little bit stronger than Main Street. Thank you. I encourage, appreciate your concerns and encourage you to support this. Alderman Sprouse, thank you. Alderman Waters. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I need some education here, uh, Keith. Uh, Am I look, I'm, look, I'm looking at the second, the first photo. Is that where it's going to be uh, placed, uh, Alderman Petrelli? Um, hold on just a second. Um, yeah. hold, hold on one sec second, Peg. Go ahead, uh, oh, go ahead Alderman Petrelli. Go ahead. If you look in the very back of the book, the last one, two, three pages, you can see where the design is superimposed on the existing conditions to give you an idea of scale and size from the perspective of the highway, driving by the highway, driving by Indian Lake, um, you know, and heading off uh, the entrance ramp to 386, mm. 
that kind of gives you an idea of scale and size. Does Alden, that answer yeah. your question? Alden Waters. Yeah, I, I see. I see what you're talking about, uh, Alderman Trilly. But the exact location, it would be on this hill, uh, on, on the first okay. photo. What page is he on? Alderman Waters, what page are you on, so she can sort of help? The, the first yeah. photo. First photo. Yeah. This is. It's going to be there. Here we go. Okay, hold there on a go. second, Keith. Okay. <clears throat> Keith, okay. hold on one second. Uh, you want to try it, or should we go to Keith? Okay. Keith, yeah, Keith. Okay. okay I'm Keith. sorry. Go ahead. Let me kind of give just a little bit of a history of, of kind of what brought us to this point. Initially, uh, the developers, they're doing some significant investment uh, in, that, in that whole development. We've got new <coughs> ownership within there. And initially, they wanted to come with some significant, what I would consider a sign. And, you know, there wasn't an ability to do that under our sign ordinance. So uh, basically what they're doing is they're meeting the definition of building a building or a structure. And then that signage that you that you see on uh, on the on the building is actually basically a wall sign, uh, but it's uh, I mean it is it is operating in the sense of of advertising for the for the site. Uh, but what what it is is in order for them to do this, they've got to build it at this at this scale, and they have to build it uh, to our design standards. So basically. The question might be, well, what if somebody else wanted to do this? Would be, well, if they did it and and did it to this level, which is what you would have to do, uh, it, it would it would be significant. And probably another smaller development, <clears throat> it'd be difficult probably to justify this significant expense. Uh, but for this development, it's pretty large. Uh, this actually, prop, you know, from their standpoint, would be something that would be worth an investment, you know, worth making. So I just thought I might might point point that out and what was the what was the other question Alden waters go ahead about the, the height of these of the uh, is that 52 feet 53 feet and currently within that particular development the height limitation uh, for the plan development <coughs> is 35 feet and then generally in the commercial zone typically I, th I think it's maybe 75 feet for, for just a basic uh, basic deal, but in this plan development, that height is uh, is capped at 35 feet in this particular part of the streets of Indian Lake, and so this would be increasing that up to the uh, to the 53 foot uh, height. Okay, thank. You. Uh, uh, waters. No, I got. That's what, thank you, Keith. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Keith. <clears throat> this is this would be the first, wouldn't it, for something like this in our city. Yeah, I, I think it. Pro I think it probably would be. Because I, I remember a few years ago, we had this same situation with the uh, merchant on Main Street about his sign, mm -hmm. and and we had to turn him down. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna concur with my colleague here. I I don't, I don't like this at all. I, I think it, it's 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 getting out of the proportion of what we're used to having here. Uh, and like he says, like my colleague says, if you, if you look around, our signs are pretty well organized in, in one fashion. Everywhere right. you look, this is not acceptable. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Waters, thank you. Um, Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. I did want to point out, I think one of Alderman Waters' questions was where exactly is the sign located? It is on access to the corner of the Barnes and Nova building. Yes, if you don't mind flipping to that slide. That one before. Yeah, I think it's over here somewhere. It, here's the picture, Keith. That Do you one? have this? Okay, yeah. You got that one on there? Yeah. So the red bullet point yeah, gives yeah. you an idea of the location. So it's on the highway side, primarily. Alderman Petrelli, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Gilly. Uh, I don't know. I have a question maybe for Keith or the Chairman. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Did we, we did just recently approve a water tower right on the highway in plain view that is approximately how tall? That's supposed to say the streets of Indian Lake on it? Uh, I, I think it may be 90. 90 feet? Maybe 85 or 90. So 40 feet higher than this? Oh, yeah. I want to I add something. Yeah. We didn't approve the height. No. We have no jurisdiction over that. Okay. Yeah. We approved that they could build a water tower, and it's going to be probably 90 feet high. Exactly. And it's going to say the streets of Indian Lake. 
So in my opinion, this is this is going to look better than a water tower. So I don't know why we wouldn't approve this. Thank you, Alderman Gilly. Thank you, uh, Alderman Hedberg. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to say, I mean, I, I I really did not think that there was going to be any discussion on this tonight. I thought it was like Alderman Petrelli said, a slam dunk. It's a beautiful design. You've got to be able to have someone see it. It needs to be that height, and um, I commend you for the work. It's beautiful. I'm going to vote on it. Thanks. I'm thank going to vote yes. I mean, thank you, Alderman Hedberg. All those in favor of accepting resolution 2018-3, please signify. By, um, let's call, please signify by saying aye when Kate calls your name. Those opposed, please say no when Kate calls your name. Brown. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Cunningham. Yes. Frost. Yes. Hedberg. Yes. Gilly. Yes. Petrelli. Yes. Skidmore. Yes. Sprouse, yes. Stamper, yes. Waters, no. Woodcock, no. Clary. Yes. It passes 11 <laughs> to 2. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Resolution 2018 3. This is a resolution to approve a final development plan amendment for Drake's Creek Shopping Center to add storage to the list of permanent uses of the property. Alderman Petrelli. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, do you want to speak? Oh, Alderman Skidmore. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about this? Yes, sir. Right, Hold thanks. on one second. I'm trying to get a microphone on. Alderman Skidmore. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. I was just asking my colleague from Ward 1 if she could tell me a little bit about this. Alderman Petrelli. Okay, so we are talking about the Drake's Creek Shopping Center where Kroger recently moved from that location across the street to their beautiful new location. They have approximately 59,000 square feet. They were approved for 25,000 square feet in the back of the facility to be used as storage. Now, um, regarding the storage, we're not talking about warehousing or folks storing their their personal items in there. We're talking about Kroger storing their disaster relief program in the back of this facility. Items that they use um, regionally. Also, there might be a couple of items um, involving like cold case storage, things of that nature. Um, through the course of the Planning Commission meetings, there was discussion where, and some concern that the front of that um, development where the old Kroger's was have some tenant space in it. So Kroger carved out a 16,000 square foot space where it was the furthest right entrance into the old Kroger's and then I believe two spaces of 2,400 square feet and then another 9,000 square foot which would actually be for their Kroger offices. So the idea being that if the tenant space is up front, there will still be enough vehicular and pedestrian traffic there to, to keep businesses in that area receiving more visitors. The subway, the, the ice cream shop, the hair trim place. So um, that, is the, that is the gist of the project. And we do have representatives from Kroger here. And if I have not been concise enough or elaborate enough, um, Director Free can answer some more questions. Thank you. Alderman Petrelli, thank you. Alderman Sprouse. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just going to kind of give a few of his thoughts on this because I know there's been a lot of discussion and I've had a lot of comment in the, in the community uh, about the failure of having a, a vacant building. And I just think we need to, if we could, to encourage folks to, to, to share my the perspective I put upon this and consider this not a failure but of a vacant building but actually putting this as a win. Now, if Kroger had decided that they were going to leave the, 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 that site and go out and build something from scratch down the road, uh, go into to a field and, and put that, then all of a sudden we're going to have a new vacant building in town. But I'm going to call this a win for two reasons. What they did was they went into another structure that had been vacant for a long time. 
that had a lot of vacancies within it and had not been really kept up to date or well maintained. And so I want to first thank them for making that move and utilizing the existing facility in our community, the old, old Kmart Shopping Center in Mabel Row. And that is one of our oldest structures, Look, is now our newest. And I appreciate them doing that. Secondly, coming up with some sort of plan to the space that they leave behind so that they aren't leaving a vacant facility and improving it so that it's open to more market. Big box retail is going away. Grocery is not going away. Big box retail is having a very difficult time. Grocery, the market is changing with home deliveries and online ordering and things like that. So I really think that we have a situation where we have an occupied building. They went from one occupied building to another occupied building and they improved it. We went from one vacant space to another vacant space, which they are filling and improving the remainder portion of it so it can be more easily filled. And so I just wanted to kind of show that the difference that it's just not another empty box that we're going to have in the community and appreciate the, uh, the, the, the work that they did into utilizing what was available to them and then to preparing what they're leaving behind. Thank you. Alderman Sprouse, thank you. Alderman Gilley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I voted with, <clears throat> with my colleague there on the general committee to recommend this for approval based on the fact that I got comfortable with language from the planning and the Kroger folks to uh, not really, I don't even want to say tie them down to some some conditions, but that we could become more comfortable with some things. So if I can't ask Keith a couple questions, that would be fabulous. Good. My, my question in the general committee was, was there anything we could do to ensure that the retail portion of this was, was I, I wanted to say was leased before we allowed storage, but right. then we got to the point, could we get to show progress towards having it built? My concern was we approved storage and mm -hmm. tomorrow we can store things and it's years before we rent out the the, right. the office or commercial so have we made any progress there or can you give us and and the, the, the uh, Kroger folks are here and they can maybe speak more directly to that but I think one of the things that would be uh, important in making sure that that is divided up uh -huh. uh, as it's kind of shown on the plan that everybody is seeing is that there are interior walls and they have made changes and I think the the latest uh, plans that everyone has mm -hmm. they do show those walls as being hard walls versus before it was just kind of a line drawn, you know, showing where the storage would be and, and where everything else would be. I think that's a that's a very important thing uh, to do, and I think the developer <clears throat> developers are uh, the or Kroger is willing to, you know, willing to do that. I think that's an important, you know, part of it. Uh, if it was contingent upon maybe getting a tenant, and they might be able to speak as to whether they have any potential tenants, you know, for that. But it's possible if you if you contingent that on getting a tenant in there, they very well might quickly get a tenant in there uh, in order, you know, and be able to go forward. But then maybe it's not the right tenant and it's only there for four or five months, and then it goes vacant and then it's, you know, there's really nothing to, to kind of tie them to that. So I think that one of the key things is that they're doing that separation with physically making that improvement inside the building and uh, on separating those uh, those spaces. And that would be that'd be quite costly to do, so that would be a significant thing to do. One additional thing that uh, that the Kroger has agreed to, that the planning staff wanted and, and the uh, planning commission supported, uh, was improvement to the uh, parking lot uh, to add more landscaping. It did remove some of the parking, but it, it's going to make that a lot softer and a lot more attractive of a, of a development as well. Oh, um, next question. Keith, if we approve this change and Kroger folks decide, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, they might, I might have to move to suspend the rules to ask them to answer this question. Their lease runs out in 2019 and then you have concurrent leases after that. For 30 years. For 30 years. But the next one does run out in 2019. If they decide they don't want to be there in 2019, which hopefully they would not, are we, we're stuck with that storage zoning at that point yeah we would be at, at where we're at where we're at right now that would be would be the condition of course the the owner of the property and Kroger are co-applicants in requesting this so 
uh, if there was and, and, the, and you if you I want to suspend, suspend the rules yeah. mayor. motion to suspend yeah. the rules without okay. objection yeah you might be able go to ahead Good evening, my name is John Corbett. I'm the real estate manager for Kroger. <clears throat> Part of the deal that we've signed with the landlord there is if we get this approval, we are going to automatically renew one of the five-year options. So it won't be 2019 anymore. It'll be 2024. Do you, do you have people interested in the uh, office and retail space that you can speak to? Well, the office space is ours. Um, okay, the, the, I got you. The retail space... I got two phone calls yesterday. Uh, both of them were from uh, trampoline facilities. So there's two different trampoline users that, that, that want that space. And if, are, are, we, are we tied to that, um, the configuration that's on that plan? We, or is it the square footage? That's. I, I, think, if, I think if it's uh, confirmed for approval, I believe it would be, uh, loosely tied to it but tied to that specific square footage doesn't mean that wall couldn't move a little bit but not not in any way i would think increase the storage uh right. amount above twenty five thousand. but maybe if it had to shift around a little bit yeah. uh, especially if it could shift where maybe there was more commercial potential along the front of it that that probably would be would be positive oh mcgilly um Thank you for answering that question <clears throat> and for your commitment to work on this. I will, I will tell you personally, I'm still not the most comfortable with it. I mean, it, it's almost like we're, it's just a key, to me personally, that is a key part of, of town, of, of with all the people that we have coming in and out of the park. It, it limits some things that maybe could be done with that if it is storage. I hope. I mean, I don't, it's nothing personal with you guys. It's just understandable. There's some uses for that that could be a lot more beneficial to those businesses. Um, talking with the business, I'm, you can sit down. I'm sorry. I, thank you very much. Alderman Corbett, stick by close to be a good thing. And sorry. Just talking Mr. Corbett. <laughs> he is, an alderman. He, he is yeah, also an alderman. You can be if you want to be. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, go ahead. Just talking with the business owners there, it's almost like you're – you're looking for the lesser of two evils. Do we take a gamble on it being empty for another one or two or three years, or do we give them is something better than nothing? I mean, that's kind of where you're at or where I am. I don't want to end a sentence with a preposition, but that's where I am at this time. So thank you. Alderman Gilly, thank you. Uh, Alderman Frost. What's a preposition? At, at the log. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> I, understand, I really appreciate everything my colleague next to me spoke to, and I think uh, he's got a very valid point. However, I'm going to uh, drift a little bit away from that. Um, right off the top, uh, I, uh, I'm going to support this. Uh, Alderman Sprouse uh, had some good points, and I want to build on one or two is, number one, the disaster relief in in the back the storage that you're proposing to put in the back for disaster relief um, I remember when the tornado came through here uh, Kroger very quickly stepped up and offered supplies to and some things to people and it came out of that store because I was one some of the ones that went and picked up stuff to take back to the site uh, and I appreciate that and remember that the other is those businesses down there uh, I want to see them continue to succeed and I'm glad to hear that you're looking to um, facilitate retail in that building. I think it's very important. Uh, that is one of our older structures in the city. Um, and, and, and before you move to the new location, those businesses were really thriving. And I know through conversations they're really struggling now. And whatever you can do to facilitate and put a business that will create foot traffic for those folks, um, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, and, and like I said, I'm going to support it. And a disappointment, I want to express a disappointment to Mr. Sprouse, is that's the first time you've delivered on something and you didn't have an analogy. And, and I, was, I was really hoping for one tonight. So. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. <laughs>
Uh, Alderman Frost, thank you. Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not sure who I should direct the question to, whether it would be Keith or the representative of Kroger. Um, several questions. Um, the fuel station, will that remain? Uh, go ahead, John. Yeah, if we get this um, amendment, the intent is to keep the fuel center open. For now, right now, it's profitable um, on its own. If that changes at some point in the future, I mean, we'll have to revisit that. But, but the intent, yes, is to keep keep it open. Okay, that's my first question. Okay, I have several. Uh, the 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 outside. You know, what kind of improvements are you going to make on the front part of the outside, and what kind of changes are you going to make to facilitate the storage on the back part? The, the facade work on the front will depend on whatever tenant we get and what their what their needs are. Uh, so do you have a pic? I, I mean, a visual or anything? Or it's really tough. That's to what do. I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, it's tough to do without a, without a tenant. Yeah. Kind of in place because everybody wants something a little bit different. Okay. Um, and the what about the changes for this to facilitate the storage? Are there there bays now back there, truck bays or? Yeah, not, none of that will will change. Okay, so that'll stay pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, on the improvements and the fuel station, mm -hmm. and you spoke to the improvements of the parking lot. Yes. Could you repeat that again? Yeah. I didn't quite understand. What yeah, you we're were. adding some uh, some landscape islands in the parking lot, and then there's some more in the rear. Okay. That we're adding the. the that doesn't have today. One other thing that wasn't mentioned was the the, the, the Kroger sign that's got the fuel pricing on it. Uh huh. We've worked with those tenants, and it, that's a separate owner. Those shops are owned by somebody completely different. But we've agreed to to work with them and add some panels on that sign for for them, because right now the sign as they have is not not very good. Um, so mm -hmm. we're doing that at our expense. Okay. So that'll give them some some nice signage up on Main Street. Okay. So you anticipate having office space. In one area, mm -hmm. in the front part. Yes, I'm talking about the front, okay, which would be your offices. Yes, ma'am. And then two 2,400 2400 square foot stores or retail stores. And then you, I have written down 16,000 square feet of another space. What would that typically be in that 16,000 foot space like give me an example well, of a the trampoline user for example um okay. but that's why i asked about the flexibility because they may want like a gym or a trampoline place they, they may want all twenty five thousand square feet of that so I, i'd like the ability to be able to shift that and make it one big space versus okay. one space and two smaller ones so um all right I, I just the small shop retail is tough without a big anchor tenant in there mm -hmm. and, and so that's why i asked about sixteen thousand uh, right I, I would. <clears throat> my preference would be to have one space, and that's one mm -hmm. lease I have to deal with. And um, but we'll we'll see what we can get. Okay. Thank you very much. You're you welcome. answer my question. Thank you, Alderman Cunningham. Uh, Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Mr. Corbin. Sorry. <laughs> I have some questions and some comments. So we had a, a a pretty healthy discussion about this project at the Planning Commission, and one this is a comment that I wanted to make is regarding tenants. Even though that this is a new situation to Hendersonville, specifically about this, that people think, oh my gosh, this was fixing to turn into a big storage facility, and it's not. Um, Kroger has been looking for tenants for over a year now, correct? That's correct. So while to Hendersonville, the knowledge of we are looking for tenant spaces is new in the last few months, they have been actively working. So then my question goes to in regards to, to tenants, I'd like to know what our economic developer thinks. Oh, uh, Rod. Welcome to, the, <coughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> so specifically, what do I think about putting retail on that space? No, or have, in the have, you, have you been able to reach out or have any contact with, with tenants to partner with Kroger's? I have not. Okay. okay. Who, all, Mr. Corbin, who, thank you. Good work, Rod. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Oliver, Oliver um, Mr. Corbin, have you been able to reach out to our Hendersonville Chamber of Commerce? Um, the chamber. I know you all have reached out to some private, to some private, you know, businesses. 
Um, I, I would recommend maybe getting with our economic developer sure. and reaching out to our Chamber of Commerce to facilitate um, getting some good tenants in there to make this a successful project for the city and for you all. Um, and I had one other question or co question slash comment, and I mentioned this at the Planning Commission. Um, with the office space for you all's employees, while I know it, it's vital, if, and I realize that the space is also potentially fluid in putting in these walls and firewalls for the separation, if for some reason that you're finding the 16,000 square foot tenant space is just not working, I know you want an anchor there, but it's not working and you're gonna start subdividing and making smaller tenant spaces, can we move that office space back towards the rear of the building as codes and planning allows, if that's allowable, to create more tenant space up front in the case where the 16,000 square foot, you're having a, a difficult time finding a tenant. That way you're generating more traffic because your um, office folks, like how many office, like how many employees would you have in there on a given time? 12. Okay. Yeah, and that's going to be, you know, a set group of people. Well, and while we welcome them in Hendersonville and we're well, excited to have them working here, you know, if there, if your offices could be pushed back to create this as a more dynamic space to create mm -hmm. tenants and more visibility, more traffic, that would be great. But thank you all for your partnership with Hendersonville. I will be voting yes on this. Alderman Petroli, thank you. Alderman Sprouse. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just share a little bit of information we discussed, realizing not everybody in this boards and general committee, but most importantly, every night, every, most people in the community were not a general committee in some of the conversation. Um, one of the things we really pushed for, and I appreciate Keith and his staff and the folks from Kroger, is just making sure we recognize that each step, each dollar they go towards developing this space may have to be undone. Um, or may not fit a potential tenant. So we are trusting very much in, in, in Keith and his staff in making sure that it's not, it doesn't look like abandoned space, but then at the same time it's not so fully developed that it limits their ability to bring in people in the future. Um, in, in, in Mr. Corbin, Keith, anybody wants to comment on this? I just want to get a little bit of information out because I know that one of the big questions that come out, anytime a building with a big roof becomes vacant, people start talking about the athletic facilities. Um, you know, baseball training, uh, high, uh, skating, hockey facilities, and things like this. And if y'all want to comment, you may just want to nod your head and say if this is an issue here. One of the things that um, we tend to make ourselves blind to when we're in a grocery store, we think we're in a huge building with a huge roof, but because we're between <laughs> aisle after aisle of groceries, we don't notice that every few feet there's another post. And so we, there may be a hundred square foot, hundred square, hundred thousand square foot building with a huge roof, but it's going to be hard to program like we would, like it was one roof. And so, if y'all have any comments about that, when folks say, "How come you can't put, you know, a skating rink there or put a practice field for baseball?" It's because when you pull those aisle, when you pull the shelves out, you're still leaving the poles behind, and basically would have to rebuild the roof. So if there's any insight you could give on that, but that's just something I wanted the folks in the community to know because that's the first question that happens when when buildings like this open up. John, go ahead. Your mic's on. Oh, sorry. There we go. Yeah, we we spoke to an indoor soccer facility user. Um, he had a couple issues with the space, but one was the one was the columns, and it would be a little tougher to, to work around. Than, than just a wide open space without a bunch of columns. Alderman Thank Sprouse. You, Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Alderman Woodcock, hold on one second here. I've got to turn off several microphones and get to you. There we go, Alderman Woodcock. Thank you, Mayor. Um, while, while this is not a perfect situation, it's one that I'm going to support. Um, I know uh, one of the neighboring tenants um, fairly well, and, and they support it. Uh, I know a local business owner who, if this passes, will probably be in contact with Mr. Corbett tonight or in the morning to take roughly 16,000 square feet of space. Now, it's not a contract or an obligation, but uh, I know I'm well enough to say that. Um, so I don't, I don't think finding a tenant is going to be a problem if this passes. So I wouldn't let that be a concern or reason to vote against it. 
Um, and again, with that, I plan to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Woodcock. Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Corbin, is that right? Yes. I'm getting it right. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, he's an alderman in the city of uh, White House. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. So you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are y'all meeting tonight? No. <laughs> a, couple, a couple of these questions I think have been at you, you. You're talking about 12 offices, 12 people. 12 people. 12 people. Okay. Um, basically, you're subletting or to, to whoever comes in there. That's correct. You'll be subletting. Uh, but you are going to sign another contract if this passes. So it would be your sublet would be good till 2024. I think people need to know it's really a sublease situation. It, it is. And, and we've actually, the, the, the lease amendment has been signed and, and it obligates us to exercise a five year option in the event that we get the rezoning prior to April 30th, I think was the date we put in there. So once this passes, we're, we're on the hook for another five years. Okay. Um, other Kroglers in similar situations throughout the United States or Southeast opened up, moved across the street, been empty. What's went in them? What, what can you tell me that Roanoke, Virginia has done or wherever Kroger goes? Cincinnati's got them all over the place. So. It, it really just depends. Help I mean, sell, sell me that this is a good idea, that it's worked well some other places. Th this one's a little unique because we don't, you know, we've... Um, typically our warehouse, our, our, our storage, our, our disaster recovery is set. Um, Nashville was a little bit unique in that we had two or three spaces around uh, Nashville. Um, neither one was ideal. We're paying rent in three different locations. It made sense to consolidate them in, into one. So this, this is really a little bit different. I know, I know there were a couple of locations in East Tennessee that we've recently closed. They're not relocations, they're just closed stores. Um, and they've, uh, Ollie's Bargain Hunt is, is one company that, that took one of the spaces. Typically it's not prime retail anymore. It's, it's, there's a reason we're, we're leaving it. Um, but I think the plan that we've got here to occupy some of the space with our disaster recovery, some with, with storage, and then doing the best we can to put roughly a third of it in, in some sort of retail is, I'm not necessarily saying, saying this is a bad plan. I just want to know where this pan's plan has been put in place at some other empty Kroger facilities. And I've been in a few of them throughout mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, where's another plan that this has worked? Where's there been trampoline places put? Where's there been retail with offices put? Where's <laughs> that worked at? Like I said, I, to my I, knowledge, I know, I think Hendersonville is a unique place too. And that's the reason we're discussing this plan. So. Right. I know that's a hard question, but it's one I'd really like answered because it's that that's going to sway my vote. Yeah, it it's really tough because, we, to my knowledge, we've not done this type of thing anywhere. Okay. okay. Alderman Brown. Uh, I think I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alderman Skidmore. Thank you. Just I have a couple of comments. Um, first of all, do you just uh, two questions before I make two statements. Do you all have an, an engineer here tonight? Uh, one of the engineers, I may need to talk to you about something. Uh, well, I will have to actually. And then do you all have anyone that's also over like the, I don't know, I don't know what the correct terminology would be for Kroger's, but the, the grocery aspect of, of anything uh, that deals with the grocery store and its whole no, no Can one. Can you be a more specific? Yeah. I may be just, able to help you. Well, I just, I, here's what I want to say. Um, well, let me ask. Let me talk to the engineer for us because this is that's more of a comment that that I have. Without about objection, Kroger's. we'd like to suspend the rules. But I do need to talk to the the engineer. Go ahead. All right. All thank, good more. Go ahead. thank you. On on the the Kroger side over there. What's your name, sir? I'm sorry. Randy Perry with Perry Engineering. Okay, Mr. Perry. Thank you for coming tonight, and sure. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, I'm the alderman, Mark Skidman from Ward 1, and I'm also chairman of Public Works. And so when I look at these plans, you know, they come through our committee consistently on a on mm -hmm. monthly basis. Now, on that property, do you, does the Kroger's own the whole the property as it is, you know, the, the parking lot, the whole thing? 
Um, no, they don't own any of it. They, that, say again, I'm they, sorry? They don't own any of it. And okay. there are two separate landowners All right. that own a piece of that shopping center. Okay, because here's my question. On the right side of, mm -hmm. of the parking, and I don't know if you need to call those folks or who owns it, but there's a consistent every day, and I know you'll know what I'm talking about if you've been to the property, water yeah. comes there on a consistent basis next to the, behind the, 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 the fire um, stone right there. There's a spring in that bank. Uh, and I'm wondering whether that can be correct or not because it's always, uh, it's always wet there. It doesn't matter uh, what time of year. It's always, it's always a wet. It's always a mess. And I don't know if there's anything that you all can relay to the, the property owner or you all can do something about it. I'm not saying you should, but if you can, you can. If not, relay that to the owners that there's an issue there. And has been for quite some time, and I'm not, I've never been able to understand why that's never been corrected, actually. There's uh, two things. The, yeah. the property is divided, if you're looking at the building, yes, in the common wall between the Kroger and the shops to the right. right. So the Kroger is leasing a piece of property owned by a, a, a developer in California Okay. from the right side of the Kroger to the left. I got you. <clears throat> the shops are on the right side. That's a separate property owner, not the guy in California. Uh, and he's the one that we could mention. Okay, yeah. Possible. You're not going to solve it because it's a spring. I was afraid I, of that, actually. I know what you're talking about, yeah. but you could help divert the drainage that comes from the spring. Yeah. Okay. With an, an inlet and maybe some piping out the back, yeah. that sort of thing. So you, you, well, you I, could I, help it. Yeah. Well, I was looking at it, and I, I'm starting to get a little older in my eyesight. I was looking to see on there, and I couldn't see because it usually de uh, signifies who, what, you know, the property yeah. owners are on that. And I, I saw the hat of shells on there, but it really wasn't their problem, I don't think. Um, but I appreciate your, your comment on that because I've always wondered about that why it was never, you know, why it was never solved because it is an issue down there. Yeah, and I, I think mean, it's—I don't think it's on the Firestone property. I think it's on okay. the the property that the guy that owns the shops. Okay. Well, if you do, property. if you by chance run into him or his company or whomever that is responsible for that, if you could relay that message to them, I sure would appreciate sure. it because it's it's an eyesore, but it's also a hindrance. Um, so. Uh, I appreciate your, your time and effort. And then I, I want to say one thing about the Kroger Company. You know, you've been a, uh, a member of our community for quite some time. Um, and I appreciate that uh, as an alderman and as someone that has grown up in this community. And uh, they're, they're a mainstay. And uh, we want to help. Uh, you all have been, you know, a good steward to us. And we want to extend the hand when we can. Um, I do want to say one thing, if you could relay this. There's a gentleman, I can't re uh, Jimmy uh, Douglas. Douglas is the manager at the new, uh, at the new Kroger's. He used to be. He's not there. Oh, he's not there anymore? Okay, well, I wanted to say I, I haven't seen him. I, I hadn't seen him in a while, but he helped my mother out um, when he was there one day when he was taking some stuff out. Is he with the K Kroger stores? Or? He is. He manages the store in, in uh, East Nashville now. In We're East about Nashville? to start an expansion project in we needed his uh, expertise. He went through yes, he the deal did. here, and so we, we need him. Well, I got to tell you, you got a good one there because he um, he did a great job on opening up our our your new store, which is we consider ours, you know, and because you all are like members of our community, obviously, and he did a great job there, and so. He's an asset to your company, and he'll do a great job there in East Nashville as well. Thank you. But uh, thank you again, guys. Anything we can do here, let us know. Thank you. Mr. Right. Perry, thank you. Alderman Skidmore, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Stamper. On this, I just wanted to give my two cents uh, about it. Uh, I, I'll give you a nickel's worth. I think, it, obviously, this is, this is going to pass. Uh, I support it. That's not been an issue. But uh, am I on? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it would go here. red or something, but there you go. Now I don't yeah. know the new ones, but <laughs> new equipment. Speaking of anecdotes, Katie Sandango, uh, she's a friend of mine and uh, works really hard at the at, at Kroger. And like the previous alderman said, that they've been a great uh, citizen or you know corporate citizen of our community for a long time. And the the amount of time that's been yeah. spent on this, Who not else? just because of the intricacies of the the plan. <laughs> Uh, but in Alderman Corbett, you may know this in White House. There's probably some some spaces around town that are just just kind of special. And I think 
the Alderman Junior Alderman from Ward Four alluded to uh, the the geography of how this fits in with our parks, and I mean I remember Baskin Robbins back when the McGreevies uh, owned you know ran it when I was a kid, and uh, we just we just love we we love this area, and really the economy changes, and what's led to this obviously is big box uh, stores. The Kmart really is the domino that triggered this. Uh, them them going out and then Kroger moving across the street. So we we deal with we dealt with the old Sears space right now. I believe is vacant. Uh, so we we, we got to be real careful about those things. And I th I applaud the Planning Commission and the board for uh, teasing out every contingency and possibility. But uh, I think I think it's uh, a lot of the things are are, are really. Uh, the concerns that have been raised have been good ones. Uh, I really appreciate, especially on the signage. Uh, I'm uh, as a as a new business owner in town. I'm I'm realizing the value of uh, of little things that that uh, go into making foot traffic a little bit heavier. And I share the concerns from the senior alderman from Ward Five uh, about those uh, those little retail places. They're the subway, the little U the U UPS store. Uh, I don't need a haircut place, but uh, you know the I can't I can't patronize them uh, with my dollars. But I, me and my nine-year-old did hit the Baskin Robbins when it was I think one of the snow days, and it was it was you know, there's folks in there in the cold. But uh, anyway, we just we just uh, want to continue uh, a great relationship with Kroger Corporation, and I think we've done our due diligence here. So with that, I'll call the question. Um, Alderman Stamper, will you forgive me for not recognizing that, so I could ask. Uh, Mr. Free, a question. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate that, Keith. Um, we had a question over here, um, and John mentioned uh, hope that he'd hope that um, the planning staff or planning commission would recognize the possibility they may need to shift and add square footage to retail. I feel like we need to give a little bit of direction to the planning staff and to the planning commission if that were a possibility. Would it make sense to amend this to say 16,000 square foot or more of retail? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I'm glad you guys are catching me. Thank you. Yeah. Pro probably maybe the better wording might be not to exceed 25,000 of square foot of storage. So just the second part or the 16,000 just the or just the 25,000? I think just the 25,000. Okay. okay. That so way they could kind of move it within there okay. to the best fit. But they, in no circumstance, could go over 25,000 square feet. Okay. Uh, we have a motion from Alderman, Alderman Sprouse and a second from Alderman Skidmore. Hold on one second, Keith. Um, so let's look on page 49, if you could. And after January 2nd, 2018, um, the motion is to add not to exceed 25,000 square feet of, of storage, of indoor storage space. Indoor storage space, yes. Okay. Uh, Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. Do we not already have that clarified? I thought we already had that clarified, that 25000 yeah. was the max. Yeah, it, it, it is on the uh, plan, so by approving it, it's doing it's doing that. So we're going to go ahead and put it, just yeah. be safe. Just to give the clarity. Sure. We have a motion, a second for this amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passed unanimously. Thank you, Alderman Stamper. Um, on resolution 2018-2, please signify your support by saying aye. Dash three. Uh, is it dash three? Yes, yeah, Resolution 2018-3, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That We have the no's are Alderman Gilly, Alderman Brown. Anyone else? I apologize. We should have called roll, probably. Alderman Frost, you voted. You voted aye. <coughs> okay. Thank you. That passes eleven to two. Next on our agenda is Resolution 2018-5. This is the resolution to replace wrecked vehicles in the police department. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Thank you, Mr. Corbett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Free. Um, Alderman Brown. So moved. A motion and a second. Uh, Alderman Hedberg. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would just like to ask, um, since Alderman Brown is the sponsor, if he could just make clear to the um, general public that are watching TV this evening that there are no money needed to be um, added other than what's already in the current budget. If he could just clarify for the people that it, because it might just look to people sitting there that we're going to spend another $42,000. So if we could just clarify for the people out watching TV, Sorry. the insurance and the, the rest of the money. Thank Alderman you. Brown, would you want to speak on that? I would. Give me the green light. Uh, no, red, it's now the red, red light. Red light. I'm yeah. sorry. Red means go. Here. Red means go. That's backwards. Um, uh, just so the public can know that this is insurance money and money that's already in the uh, in the budget, and all we're doing is just replacing some automobiles. We're not adding any money to the budget. Thank you, Alderman Brown. Alderman Thank Hepburn. you. Thank you, Alderman Brown. Appreciate it. All those in favor of resolution 2018 debt. I'm sorry. All those in favor of Resolution 2018-5, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next, we have reading of Resolution 2018-6. This is a resolution to apply for assistance to firefighters grant, AFG. Um, Alderman Brown. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Go ahead. I'll speak Alderman to it. Alderman Brown. Yes, I explained this earlier in our report that the fire department will be applying for about $550,000 worth of grants. That'll be a, it's a 90-10. That means we would pay 10% of that on those grants that are approved. So uh, I would tell you that uh, I hope they do a good job on the grants. I hope they get every, every dime of it so we can match that 10% and help that ISO rating with some better equipment. Thank you. Alderman Brown, thank you. All those in favor of accepting resolution 2018-6, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next we have on the agenda, um, Ordinance 2018-7, which you've been handed a copy of. That is an ordinance amending Ordinance 2017-29, which is our budget ordinance. Uh, this is appropriating funds for a feasibility study regarding impact fees for development in Hendersonville. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Alderman Sprouse. I just want to, I'm going to have some conversations with the, the planning director on this. I'm just a little concerned that we, we miss a number by 38%. Um, and we're getting to the point now where we're starting, and we'll have these conver I'll I'll this conversation with him before second reading, but we're also reaching to the point now where we're starting, you know, when you start when you start to hit the number we're going to be appropriating for this study, we're starting to hit the number that would cost if we were going to bring somebody on staff, at least somebody on staff for half a year. So I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to have some questions and hopefully mm -hmm. can have the answers before second reading. Thank you. I'll take a little bit of blame for that. We want to shoot low so that before we send out RFPs that, uh, the vendors would in, intentionally would get the impression that we were looking for something around forty thousand um, dollars, and so that's why we felt like we could always come back and ask for more. Honestly, it came out more than we th higher than we thought it would be, but uh, feel free to ask those questions next time. Thank you. All those in favor of accepting first reading of Ordinance 2018-7, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next, we have item J. And you have that in front of you. This is an ordinance. This is first reading of or, an ordinance amending the Hendersonville Municipal Code, uh, Title 10 for animal control. Alderman Brown. I'll move. A motion and a second. Uh, I'd like to speak to it, Mayor. Alderman Brown, go ahead. This ordinance is actually an ordinance that uh, expired in December. The the uh, the Deer Committee, uh, made up of citizens. Uh, decided they wanted this ordinance to stay on the books and we were supposed supposed to vote on this in December and we did not get it done as a board so that is the reason it's back before you the only change in this ordinance it now when we vote on it it will be permanent it will not be temporary it was temporary for 18 months so it's exactly the same ordinance that was on the books but it will be uh, not be temporary any longer thank you Alderman Brown thank you Alderman Stamper Mayor, I'd like to ask the uh, perhaps the liaison to the Deer Committee if they have any statistics on uh, how many violations were were cited since the enactment of the temporary ordinance. Um, <laughs> I, I don't mean to correct you, but it's something we've been doing for a long time. Peg is actually not the liaison from this board to the Deer Committee. Um, and it, I didn't. I didn't address Peg. Um, I don't know who it is. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I assume that we're continuing to make that mistake. I apologize for that. Alderman Brown, in uh, go ahead. 
Uh, since I am the sponsor and it came through safety committee, I can answer that question for you if that'd be fine. But thank you. All right. There's been no one fined or cited under this ordinance. I will tell you the reason, if I can further that answer, I will tell you the reason that the Deer Committee wants this to stay on the books is that we they are spending some money on education. They are spending some money on a survey that's being done by the USDA now. And they just want to have everything in place okay. uh, as we move along monitoring our deer hood. Deer herd, excuse me. Thank you. Oh, Ms. Semper. I've just, yeah, I don't know how I feel, but we have some some ordinances and, and stuff in the regs that we don't enforce. Fireworks uh, being right at the top of the list. Sledding I heard about recently. Um, traffic, I mean. Yeah, well, I, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know about having another, another. I mean, it's it's gonna pass. It's it's fine. It's fine. Let's let's just put it in there, codify it for life. <laughs> Alderman Stamper, thank you, Alderman Sprouse. Thank you. I'm gonna preface this by giving a little bit of a conflict of interest. You'll see here. I'm holding a, a keychain for a rental car. Um, reason why I have a rental car is because. Um, I used the Equinox to uh, to reduce the deer population by one a few weeks ago. Um, it's not our first vehicle to be in this shop. I'm going to be very blunt. When this ordinance came up more than a year ago, I, I offered an amendment, and this board approved two amendments. One was to delay enactment of the ordinance so that there would be a period to educate the public. I don't think we should go around and start passing laws and not have people an opportunity to know that the law is going to be there. The reason why I wanted to do that was because there's going to be, I would like to think that there's a reasonable expectation of enforcement. And if you're going to enforce the law, give people a few weeks, a few months to know about the law, and then you enforce it. I also offered a second amendment, and I believe it was passed unanimously by this board, to sunset this. And the reason I wanted to sunset was, is there, there is data available. I wanted to know what the effect of what the law is. And I thought that if we gave them a year, we gave them six months to educate and get the, everything ramped up so people would know what the law was, and then give them, I guess, more than a year to enforce it, we'd know what the effect was. Because any law that's on the books that you don't enforce makes it tougher to enforce the remaining portion of the book. It's arbitrary. It creates a situation where people don't know when they should take the city government seriously and when they shouldn't. We have some very easily things. It could be we could have herd counts from TWRA. I would feel better if someone from the committee was even in this room and could say we have herd counts pending that could tell us. We could say maybe they haven't had um, any citations issued, but I have people in the police department and in the fire department and the codes department and the planning department who are all in enforcement roles. They have, they have times that they have engaged the public and they know that their job is not necessarily to cite someone and bring them into court, but it is to engage the public to change behavior. So if someone could at least say, here's a brochure we put out and we've had contact with 20 people who are out there putting, uh, intentionally feeding the deer who are no longer doing that. We may not see the numbers that the deer have been reduced, but we could at least have some information to say that it's affected the behavior of the public. What we have right now is we're being asked to take a temporary law and to put it fully on the books when there's going to be no intention that's been demonstrated that it's going to have any effect upon the public, the safety, the welfare of the people who elect us, and there's been no demonstrated intent to enforce that law, which overall just hurts the standing of anyone in this city who has to enforce some other law. We have first reading on this. I'm not going to vote on it at first reading because I don't think we have the information we have. And I know that we'll have a couple of weeks before we have second reading. And I would strongly, strongly encourage anyone who can bring data forward to support this will do it. We'll respect the opportunity that we gave them to show that this is going to have some sort of effect. And if not, I'm going to ask you on second reading and ask every one of you to vote it down. Thank you. Alderman Sprouse, thank you. Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to answer 
um, some of Alderman Sprouse's questions. Um, one call has occurred regarding a deer feeding and um, police approached them and the answer that they received was that they were not feeding deer, they were feeding other wildlife. That came to light recently, so that's a, an issue that the committee will have to um, address regarding maybe more specific language about feeding. Um, also in the last meeting, which was December 4th, it was voted upon that educational flyers would be sent out to wards 1, 2, and 4, where it currently appears that the majority of deer are congregating. Um, thirdly, um, it was voted on and approved that the USDA do another survey. That's who did the first survey, and that's who will be doing the second survey of cervids in our area. So that request has been put in and should be happening in the next couple of months. Thank you. Alderman Petrolli, thank you. All those in favor of Ordinance 2018-8 on first reading, please signify. Uh, Alderman Brown. Um, I'm going to move to defer this for two weeks so okay. Mr. Sprouse can get the information he wants. We can get Mr. Berry, uh, ask him to come to that meeting in two motion. weeks to uh, see if we have the educational material and stuff ready. We have a motion and a second to uh, delay this for two for till our next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Or, or until which time the chairman of the committee can be here the next meeting or two. Is that okay? Uh, not really. <laughs> um, I'll pull it. Okay. Do you want to withdraw this now, or I'll, do you? Okay. I will. I will withdraw, and I'll work with the chairman to are you, get him. Are you, are you the only sponsor in this? Yep. Okay. Uh, we we've we've adopted the agenda at this point. Just make your motion to defer the. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Make the motion we got a motion to delay this by two weeks. Uh, Alderman three, Stamper, three weeks, three weeks till our next oh. meeting. Alderman Stamper. Well, can I speak to it, or do you can speak on the motion to yes to delay. Uh, no, you can't. I didn't think I could. Yeah, I didn't think I could. Um, I won't speak. Yeah. I just I just want to point of not not anything to do with this motion, but the state of the current law as of right now. Folks can feed the deer yep. without with it without okay. penalty. Okay, hold on. Um, we have a motion to uh, to defer this till our next meeting. Uh, all those in favor of that, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. No. Okay. Alderman Woodcock. Who else? Say no. Alderman Woodcock. Alderman Cunningham. This is on the motion to delay this for to our next meeting. Alderman Woodcock, Alderman Cunningham voted no. <coughs> we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Next item on the agenda is um, uh, other agenda items. And as I was saying a little bit earlier, and I apologize for making this mistake, if you turn to your packet on page 67, I believe it is, um, you see an application for beer board, and that was for an at-large appointment. Um, I had that mistakenly as Ward 4. Uh, two weeks ago. Uh, then you see the other one that we added for Charles Alexander for Ward 3 for Beer Board. We had a meeting schedule for Beer Board this month. Uh, we did not have a quorum. We've had that problem in the past more months than, than not. Um, we, uh, they have a meeting on February 1st, which is before we will meet again. Uh, Alderman Cunningham. Is that from before? Oh, sorry. Uh, Alderman Waters. <coughs> Um, I, uh, okay, I need, a, I need a motion to either group them or to speak on one specific one. Hold on one second, Alderman Waters. Do we have a motion to vote on the first one? I'm, I make a motion to vote on the Ward 3 appointment. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, we have a, a motion to, uh, to move item A to behind item B. 
Make a motion to move item A to behind item B. Okay, and a second. Uh, Alderman Waters, do you wish to speak on that? We are talking about Charles Alexander as an appointee from Ward 3 for the Beer Board. Not, not that one, no, sir. Okay. All those in favor of item B, appointing Charles Alexander to the Beer Board as a representative <coughs> from Ward 3, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. Uh, we have an abstention from Alderman Woodcock. Uh, that passes uh, 12 to 0 with one abstention. Did you abstain from Alderman Woodcock? Um, now Mayor, we're back Mayor, on. Point of I thought that motion I made was to move the item. Uh, to, to, you're to, exactly right. I apologize for that. I believe we voted on it's the not, appointment. It's not late enough for me to have an excuse on that one. Um, we have a motion to consider item B and then consider item A. Second. We have a second. All those in favor of doing so, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. Now we are on item B to appoint Charles Alexander from Ward 3 as a representative of the Beer Board. So Did we appoint? A motion is second. Not yet. All those in favor of this appointment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. Now we are back on, the, on item A. This is an appointment, and I'm going to be very cautious about putting a name on this. I think we all should, just, just for the sake of some privacy here. Uh, nothing is wrong with this person at all, but we're talking about my mistake. Nothing that this person did. Uh, Alderman Waters. Correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> is this Ward 4, is that at large? This is at large. I had it listed as Ward it's, 4 it's, when I asked It doesn't say at general. large on here. Okay. Um, this is an at-large appointment. It is at large? It is at large appointment. I mistakenly put it as Ward 4 when we last met. Alderman, Alderman Woodcock. Okay. Will this complete and fill all vacancies? I don't think board? so. I, I think you still need some for five, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, we then have two other items on there. Two, next time we meet, we have two other names on there. We have, well, we have at least one other space available at this point. So, um, Alderman Hedberg. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, I'd just like to get a little bit of clarification. Obviously, I'm um, the newer alderman here. Um, the process of this uh, nomination or re-nomination to the board um, seems to get a bit mixed up to me. You know, it seems that an email is sent out and we have openings, and as alderman, I don't know if everybody does it, but I'm assuming we all do. We post the openings, and the next thing you know, there's not an opening because it was a different position. It was an at-large or whatever. So I'm thinking of myself actually trying to write some steps down and come up with um, a, a sort of how-to so that when new aldermen come in, they know what's going on. And I also think that we need to be informing each other um, if if we have a nomination and we put it out there and just like this just happened and the mayor has already got someone in place. I I'm thinking um, that we need to be notified about this, you know, because it it's not looking good as an alderman when we put out and say we've got a nomination and the next thing you know is you go to the city hall and you bring your nomination with the signatures and now there's no nom now there's no space so we go back and we all look like I'm sorry we look like idiots oh why did you ask me why did you explain it to me why did I sign the form oh you know I'm sorry we made an error so I'm just just because of this I'm actually gonna be putting together some sort of steps just like a little how-to thing for for new people because I wasn't even aware that there were boards until I was six months into into this position and then I had no clue what I was supposed to do and I, I'm sure everything I did the first time around was completely wrong <laughs> you know but now I'm a, I'm a lot more informed so ju just that's my two cents worth thank you Alderman Sprouse thank you I just want to make sure that I'm getting everything in order here because <laughs> I think as long as we follow the, the procedure that's in place and we have accurate information and I can understand how mistakes can happen and and things can be can be can be labeled incorrectly and I, and I completely understand how that is human error we can do that 
But one of the things I want to be a little bit concerned about is how we got into this situation. Um, and again, not, I'm not even going to mention the name of the person who's being sponsored. I think that's an honorable person and would, and would do a very good job should this board appoint. But was this a situation where Mr. Brown and Mr. Gilley were made aware of a vacancy in Ward 4 and they proposed this person as a vacancy to Ward 4 and then it was found out later that it was actually an at-large seat? Or how... how yeah, yeah. It, it was more confusion than that, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we had three seats available. Since then, we've had one more person leave. Okay. Um, realizing when, right after they did not have a quorum in January, that they probably wouldn't have a quorum in February, um, we sort of scrambled to find what we could. Okay. Um, and that's the same time that Kay typically sends out the notifications that we have board appoint we have board vacancies or reappointments. Uh -huh. um, so that at, sort of added to the confusion there. Um, and uh, on top of that was that some of them were ward appointments, some of them were at large, but in some of the other boards they were just ward appointments. So uh, I got with Alderman got, got with at least two aldermen on this situation, knowing that there was a ward four vacancy asking if they had somebody on another committee I got with, I think the Ward 5 alderman, asking if they could fill a vacancy. Um, and getting back with the Ward 4 folks, uh, we, I, I, I confused that Ward 5 would be a ward, a ward appointment and Ward 4 would be an at-large appointment. I had somebody that was interested in serving at-large. But okay. when it came down to actually filling out the paperwork, I told Kay the wrong thing. Okay. And then when it came to us, that's where the mistake here, was. Here, here's, here's my concern and if, um, from a practice, and this is a conversation that I've had with city staff in a previous administration, so it's not anything that's changed in practice since we've had a change in mayor. But I think we get very much and can get into these type of situations, and this is the first time it's ever really become a huge issue, when aldermen, when really... Aldermen need to be informed that there is a vacancy. We are informed regularly by an ongoing list. We also have the ability ourselves to go and look at the list online and see where those vacancies exist. But we are informed of those. But when we are informed of those, that really needs to stop. City staff, the mayor's office, whoever the mayor needs to be, whoever the mayor is, because this is something that has been an issue in previous administrations, and I appreciate the city recorder and her understanding and helping me with this in the past, but it is the role of the alderman to engage a constituent and talk to them about serving and to invite them and to talk to them and to make the nomination. As opposed, there have been times years ago where I've been told that someone came in and filled out the form and I need to sign it for their nomination and I don't even know the person. Never had a conversation with them. So I think that this is, shows how we can get in this type of situation when we start putting the cart before the horse and um, aldermen are excluded from that role. Now, are we in danger, if this appointment is not made, are we in danger of not having quorum at the next beer board meeting? Yes, we are, and we've got some temporary permits that are in danger of expiring as well. Okay. Uh -huh. my, my question, I will be happy to support this. I know, the, I know the nominee, I feel comfortable with the job, but the thing that I always want to know uh, when someone, whether it's perceived or real from the beginning, or it's real that it's going to be an appointment. I see the signatures of Mr. Brown and Mr. Gilly on here, and if they're fine with it, um, even if it's an at-a-large appointment, I still like to defer to the alderman um, from that ward. If they're fine with it, I'm fine with it. Alderman Stamper, I think Alderman Strauss. I think that the if we look back on the tape to confirm this. We, I don't believe we have a motion on the table for discussion right now. I, do, I don't remember hearing a motion in a second. Hold on. Alderman mm -hmm. Stanford, would you like to make a motion for this item? You are... Am I correct in that? You are correct. All right. Thank you I'm, for catching I'm that. I'm Mr. Parliamentarian tonight. Thank you for catching that. That makes a lot of us. I will make a motion to... Uh, I'll make a motion to recommend the appointment of Jennifer Motts to serve on the rear board at the as the at-large, but I want to speak on it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Alderman Stanford, thank you. Go ahead. I mean, several aldermen have spoken. What's done is done. What what my colleague and I have to do, the one person kind of out of the mix in all this is a guy that wants to serve his community 
that we spoke to, uh, or Alderman, uh, the junior alderman from Ward 6 spoke to, Mr. Woodward, uh, there's not a spot for him now. Uh, in times past, we've had at large, we've, we've had two great gentlemen here. If you remember, uh, uh, the senior alderman from Ward 3 had a, had a, a, a person, I uh, can't remember, he had from, from your area. Billy and we, Greg. Hmm? Billy Gray. Billy? Yeah, and we had Dale Duell. And we, we just put, you know, we had two, two great folks and we, had, we put it up for a, a vote. We're not gonna get that chance with Gary, who's, who's volunteered to do this, because now we've already, we're filling the at-large slot tonight. And so I just, the, the in, unintended consequences are somebody who's willing to serve. And I'll, I'll let the junior alderman speak a little bit more on, on, on this. He's left without a, even a shot at a seat because the at-large is getting filled up tonight. And when all we've done is kind of follow the process the way we understand it uh, to the best of our ability and gone out there and find somebody willing to serve. So uh, obviously I made the motion. I will, I, I'm sure that uh, the, the person from Ward 4 uh, tonight and Turner next week are, are fine folks for the beer board. Uh, that's not the issue at all. But uh, anyway, just, just an unintended consequence of this. Alderman Stanford, thank you. Alderman Waters. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Uh, as a liaison with the beer board, <clears throat> we've had to cancel two meetings because of lack of form. Uh, I'm embarrassed really because my colleague and I, we, we did discuss this gentleman as at large and he agreed and I brought the form to the office several weeks or week or so ago and now here it is it's been changed tonight by by the mayor from a on, on from ward four from a vacancy to at large now i've got to go back and tell this gentleman we don't have at large open anymore so yes i'm embarrassed and i, I think it's i don't think it was done correctly and i have to agree with the, and i don't generally agree with uh my colleague in Ward uh, 2, but uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Uh, I don't think, I think that's what we're here for. If, you, if you're on a board, I'm on a beer board, it's my job to, to help fill it, the vacancy. And when I go out and, and get somebody and, and tell them what it's about, they, they send in the papers, I bring them to the office, <coughs> it, it's a done deal. Then tonight, you, you want to change it. I don't agree with it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Alderman Woodcock. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, how, so it's my understanding that it's been at least three months that we've had vacancies. It's my understanding that Kay emails us at least once a month with vacancies. But once a quarter, usually. Uh, once a quarter. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I, in my personal opinion, this is not your fault. I mean, we've all known that there's been vacancies. Um, I know Ward 5, I think, has vacancies, and I will be honest and say I just haven't really thought about filling them. You know, I've had other things on the plate, so I'm not going to blame you for any issues with that. Um, you know, I think we all need to do a better job of reviewing the memos Kay sends out, and if there's a vacancy, try to fill it as soon as possible and then not get mad if someone else fills it in the meantime. Um, I will review the list and if Ward 5 still has vacancies I'll try to fill those and if not you know if we can't find someone maybe try to work something out with the other aldermen um, but again we, we've known about these vacancies so let's not try to pass judgment on anyone else thank you Alderman Woodcock thank you Alderman Brown thank you mayor um, I agree with just about everything that was said along here uh, this evening about this um, I think we all need to be more vigilant about uh, openings uh, I would hate to see mr. Woodward want to serve his city and not be able to do that I know I believe I believe the Arts Council I believe there's a couple other places that may have at-large openings right now uh, that if he would consider doing that I don't know if there's anything beautiful about serving on the beer board but I mean if he like wants to serve uh, I agree with Alderman Woodcock I think there's probably two or three places out there that we could find for him to serve um, and I would certainly like to see him do that. Uh, I would like to speak to uh, 
the lady that has been nominated for the beer board. Uh, outstanding citizen, works very hard, has worked in her school extremely hard, has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars along with some of her buddies for Mary's Magical Place. Uh, will be there at the meetings, I believe. I don't think she'll be a quorum problem. Uh, I think she would serve uh, very well and do a great job. So um, I do think we all need to be more vigilant, pay attention, work harder uh, to getting these things filled and uh, take our responsibility. Thank you. Alderman Brown, thank you. Alderman Hedberg. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we had a person from Ward 5 that answered the ad I put, the, the note, notice I put on um, nextdoor.com. Okay? There's not a vacancy in Ward 5 on the beer board. Um, no, I, I Hold thought, on here. Hold on here. Um, we don't have a vacancy from Ward 5 on the beer board. Okay. <coughs> I, sorry, I understood. I guess my next thing is how many members are on the board? Okay. How many people are on the board? <coughs> seven. So in the event we can't fill these seats hold on, and hold on. on the beer board at seven, we have other boards that are five and other beer boards. Board I'm just talking yeah. about the beer board. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Alderman Hedberg. So I'm wondering in the event that we keep having the, not having a quorum, maybe it's time to either reduce the amount of people or can you add I mean what is the problem with the beer board that we can't get a quorum, I guess, is my question. question. Is it the time? Is it the day? Is it... <coughs> Commitment. I don't think our guy If, if I may um, respond... Alderman Waters, go ahead. If I may, may respond... <clears throat> sure. This, this is volunteer, if I may say so, and we all know it. But we've got oh, two on the board that, that traveled a lot. They're out of town a lot. And it just happens it falls on the, the night they're out of town, and they can't help it. But we still would have a, a forum, even with two out, we'd still have a forum, but you got others that just won't show up. Now, the reason, I don't know. It's not my job to, to say why, but um, there's, there's no way you're going to change it. Oh, oh, excuse me, Alderman Waters. Excuse me. Alderman Waters has the floor. Alderman Waters, go ahead. Thank you. Alderman Hedberg? You have the floor. No, I don't need the floor. Thanks. All those in favor of appointing Jennifer Motes to serve on the beer board, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs>